Well, while the trial of civilians by military court is generally an aberration, this is not to suggest that civilians can never and have never been tried by military courts. So, for example, the Pakistan Army Act of 1952 provides that a citizen or a civilian who seduces a member of the armed forces into violating his oath of allegiance to the state or if a citizen or civilian seduces a member of the armed forces into mutiny, then such citizen or such civilian may be tried by the military courts. Similarly, the Army Act also provides that a person who is involved in the offences stipulated in the Official Secrets Act, then such civilian may also be tried by the military courts. So while the trial of civilians by military courts is generally an aberration, this is not to suggest that citizens and civilians can never be tried by military courts. What this suggests is that there are certain narrow exceptions under which a civilian may be tried under military courts. And for the constitution to be relevant and for fundamental rights to be upheld, it is important that the trial of civilians remains an exception and does not become the norm. Now, recent events have raised a number of questions about the trial of civilians by military courts. And there have been some questions as to whether or not civilians can be tried by military courts for offences including attacks on defence installations. Before answering this question, it would perhaps be important to look at the nature of such attacks. So, for example, if someone attacks a defence installation for the purpose of acquiring important information or inquiring sensitive information or seducing a person of the armed forces into violating their oath, perhaps in that situation the offences may fall within the jurisdiction of the military courts. But if the attacks constitute rioting, then perhaps such attacks, given that they are covered by the Pakistan Penal Court, will have to be tried by a criminal court, an ordinary criminal court. Similarly, there have also been there has also been discussion about whether or not the incidents of May 9th constitute terrorism or if they merely constitute vandalism. Now, while the Anti-Terrorism Act defines terrorism, there has also been a lot of jurisprudential development as to what constitutes terrorism. So, in 2019, we saw that a bench of the Supreme Court of Pakistan led by then Chief Justice Asif Said Khosa attempted to define the contours of what constituted terrorism. And generally, sporadic acts of violence or acts of violence that inevitably frighten some people, those incidents do not constitute terrorism. But where the reason for an attack or where the entire purpose of an attack is to terrorize large sections of people, then such acts may constitute terrorism. So, again, I think some incidents on May 9th may simply be rioting and may simply constitute vandalism, but where large sections of the population were held hostage by violence and where large sections of the population were terrorized, where cars were burnt, where businesses were burnt, for the purpose of creating and instilling fear, then perhaps those incidents may constitute terrorism. By and large, one will have to look at the nature of the violence and the nature of the incidents to, uh, to conclude whether or not they fall within the ambit of terrorism.